Well, now I want to walk you through a more complex grid to give you a feel for um, how you would put three or four elements together to make a, a, a grid which then repeats across the floor. Now we'll do that. I'll just create a new product in the same way as before. And uh, let's give it a name. Again, I go into script. Remember, this is going to wipe out everything that I put in, that's been put in already. So we've got now a uh, script and we can start to put in what we want. First thing to do, let's, let's take a look at the grid I want to put in. And I've got it, a rough drawing of it here. And what you can see is that we've got a one foot tile followed by two six inch tiles and a one foot by six inch sorry an 18 inch by 6 inch tile underneath it so we've got four elements one here one place to the right one place to the right underneath and then one underneath the three of them so let's look at how we put that together the first thing we want to do is to put in a one foot tile now before we start on that look at look at one thing is is that we've got to put all these dimensions in to tile script now there's one feature you can do which is if you go in and put these tiles in as being six inches then you're fixing the grid as being six inch one foot one foot six but once you've built this grid uh, you may well encounter an exactly the same grid but a different size say a two foot by one two foot and one foot part here it's the same pattern but a different scale and so what we do is within calidus we use this thing called the unit size and when you when you put in unit size 0.5 that means that every dimension that you put in so tile 1 1 means tile 0.5 by 0.5 so in other words these are what this is a tile one unit by one unit and the unit size is 0.5 and then if I put in the unit size as let's say a foot it changes everything now the more you use tile script the more you'll realize that the unit size can be a big time saver so I'm going to start off by putting in a unit size of six inches because what you want to be able to do is to say set your unit size as the smallest dimension so in other words this will become a one by one tile this will become a two by two tile and this will become a three by one tile so again the unit size is six inches this is a one by one one unit by one unit two units by two units three units wide by one unit high so let's put in the first one which is two units by two units so we just put in tile two by two and what we should see then is a one foot tile and there it is now once you put in multi elements it's uh, it's quite possible that you'll need to also specify the repeat that you know you want to work with on this now if we look at this to start off with we're going to say this grid repeats across and underneath in a regular pattern and so the pattern repeat if you like the repeat of this grid is one foot six across and one foot six down and so back in tile script we set a command called rep for repeat and that's three by three because if you remember the unit size is six inches and there are three of those across the horizontal and three of those down the vertical so the repeat is three units by three units okay now if I press F5 now you'll see that we've got spaces left because I've only put in one tile okay so now I need to put in the other three tiles to fill in these gaps and the way I do that is I put in tile one by one which remember that's a six inch by six inch tile but now I have to specify where that tile goes and if we look at this this tile here is placed two units in and it's at the top so that's naught so we go in there and we say that's two naught I press F5 and if you watch here you'll see another little tile appears okay so that's if we go back to the first tile the two by two the full syntax there is actually that's the width that's the height 
and this is its x and y positions. The second tile is two, sorry, is one unit by one unit. It's positioned two across and naught down. The next little tile we want to place directly underneath it. So we're going to put in tile one, one. It's two units across and now which is so it's exactly the same position across here but it's down one unit press F5 and you see what's happened we've got that tile that tile and that tile have all come in so all we need to do now is to drop in a third tile underneath which is three units by one because if you remember that three units by one and this is going to be at naught X and two down so we put in naught and two. I keep my fingers crossed, press F5, and there you have it. So if I then come out of this, or oh, one thing you should notice is that when I press F5, it's telling me that everything is okay. If I um, say comment out that bottom one, you'll see that it gives me an error message saying that the grid does not cover the full floor area because you, we're laying out all these tiles and there are gaps. So again, to get this correct, we have to put in the last tile. So it's telling us everything's fine. We press OK, press OK, draw a room, put in the multi-element, and there you have it. Now, let's just go back and have a quick look at this um, unit size, because that's a six inch. Let's just say somebody comes along and they go, well, we want it to be one foot. So in other words, we're going to scale this up so this is one foot, two foot by two foot, one foot by one foot, and that'll be a foot by three foot. So if I change that unit size to one foot, press OK, press OK. So we've quantified the room again, so we've got exactly the same layout of a grid but it's scaled up and when you go to the summary report obviously what you've got then is your quantities for the different sizes in there okay now there's a lot in this film I'm just going to go through and show you something else what we can do with this repeat as well is that you've got another another factor in this which is the repeat which is down sorry across and down but you can also tell it to shift across as well because if I say I want uh, the second row to be pushed across by one unit I put in one and then you can see we've got this grid here and then the next grid is pushed across by one the next grid is pushed across by another one so you get a staggered effect OK, so that is how you can start putting multi elements together with a, a repeat that you have to work out. Put in your tiles and you can build your grid up from there. Um, what I find quite useful to do with this is, and, and it sounds a bit archaic, but I think that some of these grids, when you first see them, you think, well, the, the hardest thing to do is to figure out what's actually going on with the grid. Once you understand how the grid is built and how it's repeated, it's very simple to type it in in tile script. But until you understand how that grid is done, um, it's very difficult to do tile script because you know you don't know how to build it. So when you get a grid in and you're building it yourself, if there isn't one already available, um, just spend some time looking at the grid and saying, well, which block is repeating where? How is it repeating? how many elements are there in the, the basic grid and then start building it up in tile script and I think you'll find that once you've done one or two it starts to become much more natural. Now there's been quite a bit in this film we've covered the repeat, we've covered the tile size, the tile position and this is this is in a sense quite a complex uh, installation. You've got four elements with a staggered repeat so if you can do something like this, you'll be well on your way to be able to doing anything. Um, but I will tell you now, the good news is there are quite a lot of shortcuts for some of the more complex grids that are built into TileScript, and we'll be covering those in later films. But for the moment, that's just a good size of 
a good demonstration of some of the, the basic elements within TileScript.